This video is brought to you by Movie, a curated streaming service showing exceptional films from around the globe. Get a whole month free at movie.com slash cinemonica. Welcome to Cine Monica. We are pairing 2000s movies with each zodiac sign. As we all know, the 2000s were an amazing era of movies, especially rom-coms and teen movies that I personally really love. I am definitely including some of those, but also a lot of other iconic movies that made the 2000s such a great decade for movies. All right, let's start with Aries. I admire Aries because they are very sure of themselves. They just throw themselves at anything without fear. They're not only very competitive, but they're also very confident. They just know that if they're good at something, they're gonna go after it. They're gonna accomplish all of their dreams basically they can also be impulsive though and hot-headed and sometimes they just need to learn how to say i'm sorry okay so the movie that came to mind for aries is dream girls this is a movie that i recently just watched i know what is wrong with me i had never seen dream girls and i really really loved it i mean jennifer hudson was incredible but i really love this movie because it's about these girls who just want to make their dreams come true they do everything that they can and effie in particular really reminded me of aries because she's very competitive she's very hot-headed and impulsive she just won't change for anybody but she also really really wants to be a star and she knows that someday she will be I think this movie could really appeal to Aries because of that determination of the dream girls and I mean it's a really great movie overall I feel like they could be really inspired by it and the music is great as well moving on to Taurus Tauruses are very stubborn if they find something that they like they will keep doing it that way forever <laughs> they just get very comfortable in their routine Teens, their stability. They also really appreciate the good things in life like food or fashion, just beauty of life in general. The movie that I paired with Taurus is The Royal Tenenbaums. This is a movie by Wes Anderson who we all know has a very distinctive style uh, when it comes to cinematography with his color palettes, even just his storytelling in general is very distinctive. I feel like he really found the style that really works for him, that he likes. We never really see him steer away from that in any of his movies. When you watch a Wes Anderson movie, there is no doubt in your mind that it is made by Wes Anderson. And I feel like that's a very Taurus thing to do. And not only that, Tauruses can really appreciate the cinematography, the beautiful art direction in his movies. The Royal Tenenbaums in particular is about this really dysfunctional family where all of the kids are very distinctive. They're all set in their own ways. They like things just you know how they like them they're very stubborn basically they're always kind of wearing the same outfits throughout the movie i just feel like this movie is the epitome of wes anderson therefore i think tauruses will really really like it the royal tenenbaums is classic wes anderson in which there's a lot of comedy but in the core it's kind of like a tragic story enjoy <laughs> moving on to gemini gemini's have a lot of trouble kind of looking inward so when they look for a romantic partner they're usually looking for someone who can kind of stabilize their crazy your side they're looking for someone who is pretty much their polar opposite but also someone that can understand them Gemini's have problems kind of sorting through their feelings and their thoughts so they really need someone that can help them through that the 2000s movie that I chose for Gemini is just my luck just my luck is a classic in my mind a classic Lindsay Lohan movie. I know when you think of Lindsay Lohan, there's so many other classics. I mean, a true queen of the 2000s. But Just My Luck is one that kind of always went under the radar, I think. It also stars Chris Pine. It's kind of like a Freaky Friday situation, but instead of switching bodies, they end up switching looks. Lindsay Lohan's character, she's a very wealthy, successful, happy, popular person. Whereas Chris Pine's character is the complete opposite. He has no luck whatsoever, not successful in what he wants to do with Chip his music there's always something going wrong with his life but one day they meet and their lucks kind of exchange everything turns upside down for both of them but this movie really resonated with me with Gemini's description because they are the epitome of polar opposites but somehow they understand each other and they really complement each other so so I think if Gemini wants to watch a rom-com definitely watch just my luck Next is Cancer. Everyone says this about Cancers, but it's true. They can just feel everything. 
They are very emotional beings and not emotional in a way where they're just gonna cry every day But emotional in a way where they're just so perceptive of everyone else's emotions and also their own emotions So they are like the internet likes to say empaths They're not always very grounded because they let their emotions take over them a lot The 2000s movie that I chose for cancer is Mamma Mia. Mamma Mia is one of my favorite movies I'm not a cancer, but my rice and sign is cancer. So I feel very identified with this you you could say that Mamma Mia is a silly movie. The premise itself is kind of ridiculous, but it is such an emotional ride. It's not only the journey of this girl who's about to get married, she really wants to finally find out who her dad is. So she just impulsively invites all of her potential dads to her wedding. You can see how much Sophie is in pain over this really weird, awkward conundrum that she's in where, you know, all of these three dudes are at her wedding, but she really feels something special with all of them. The songs are so, so good. Just the fact that it's ABBA it just makes it a great soundtrack. You cannot tell me that that sleeping through your fingers scene doesn't make you shed a tear. So yeah, I feel like Mamma Mia is just a movie that cancers probably would really enjoy. They're going to go through every single emotion possible, but at the end of the day, they're gonna leave with a smile on their face and possibly a lot of tears down their cheeks. Moving on to Leo. Leos are very natural, they're very effortless. Even though they seem like they're trying really hard, they're not, that's just who they are. They know how to make an entire room turn their heads and look at them because they just have that personality, that aura that attracts other people. They are undoubtedly the center of attention. Of course, being the center of attention comes with a lot of judgment from other people but what they really truly want is just to be respected and recognized for who they are this description definitely reminded me of Elle Woods from Legally Blonde even though Elle Woods is a Gemini vegetarian just like Bruiser I feel like she could also be the perfect Leo I mean she is herself no matter what doesn't matter the environment that she's in she's unapologetically herself when she goes to Harvard to study law of course the entire school all of her professors her peers everyone judges her because of how she looks because of how she talks at first you can see how nonchalant she is about all of this she's just her she's just herself she's doing what she likes to do dressing however she likes towards the end of the movie of course she becomes more self-conscious she feels like nobody really takes her seriously but at the end of the day she just really wants to be recognized for being a great lawyer and looking fabulous while doing it I love this movie I could re-watch it every day, probably. I feel like if you're a Leo, you probably really like this movie as well. And come on, it's pretty much like the classic 2000s movie. Next is Virgo. Virgos can be kind of closed off and introverted. They can be very intelligent, but you almost would never know just because of how little they express themselves. They are, however, very hardworking and they like to work behind the scenes most of the time. They just really like to fix things. They're kind of attracted to chaos just because they know that they can fix it and make everything better. This can make them very anxious, but they won't really take the time to analyze that or look at their feelings, look how they're doing. They just want to keep going, keep going, keep going. The movie that came to mind for Virgo is Ice Princess. If you haven't seen this movie, trust me, it's really good. It is a Disney Channel original movie, which, you know, those could either be a hit or a miss, they could either be too childish, but this one is one of my absolute favorite Disney Channel original movies because it's about this girl who is really close to off, she's really shy, introverted, but she's very, very smart. She's doing a physics experiment, and so she decides to study physics in figure skating. In order to do a good job with her experiment, she actually tries out ice skating, and she ends up really, really loving the sport and becoming a figure skater. It has a great soundtrack, a great story, a great performance by Michelle Trench, Trencher, Trencher, Trencher. If you miss that 2000s teen movies aesthetic and vibe, and you haven't seen this one, I really, really recommend it. I feel like Virgos could really identify with this character, and they could learn that sometimes you have to open up and, you know, give things a try. I must say this movie was one of the reasons why I wanted to be a figure skater when I was little. Sadly, the Dominican Republic does not have ice rinks anywhere. <laughs> Moving on to Libra. Libras care a lot about the opinions of others. They don't really want to feel negative
implicitly judged by anyone, but at the same time, they can be critical of other people as well. They have really strong opinions about other people and that makes it kind of hard for them to understand themselves. Like I said, Libras are very afraid of judgment and unknown situations and situations that make them uncomfortable. So they try everything in their power to not put themselves in those situations. The 2000 movie that comes to mind for Libra is 10 Things I Hate About You. Hello guys, this is Monica. I am editing right now and I just realized that 10 Things I Hate About You, it's a movie from 1999, not the 2000s. But we can all agree that it had a long-lasting impact throughout the 2000s, so let's just call it an honorary late 90s 2000s movie for the purposes of this video. I am sorry. Thank you. Let's keep going. In this movie, we have two sisters, one that is very popular, another one that is kind of an outcast. She doesn't really want anything to do with anybody at her school or her sister. Both of them, however, are very insecure in their own way. They do care about the opinions of others. The popular girl, of course, she's very preoccupied with being popular, while the other one, she kind of closes off. She doesn't really want to put herself in situations like parties or socializing with these other people at her school. This movie is amazing. It's it's just so enjoyable. I think it's the epitome of like a teen movie. I think Libras could really enjoy this movie because they could see themselves in both of these characters. And it's also such a comfort film. I feel like if Libra ends up liking it, it could just be like a comfort movie for them where they rewatch it again and again. I think Libras could really learn from both characters to take in some time to understand themselves, to look inward, and also to put themselves out there a little bit more. Moving on to Scorpio. Scorpio's thought Thoughts are very calculated. Everything that they do has an ulterior motive. Because of this, they are kind of difficult people to get to know because you never truly know who you're talking to, if they're putting up a front, if they just want to get something out of you. Scorpios don't really want to be sharing stuff about themselves. They prefer to be asking you questions so they can learn more about you. Even though Scorpios can be popular, they're actually very lonely people. They really know how to kind of fake it till you make it everything that they end up learning about the other person they can use it for their advantage i'm not saying they're using it for evil you know they just know how to get what they want out of people the movie that i chose for scorpio is mean girls i mean this is regina george to a t she will befriend someone, not because she's really interested in their friendship, but because she just wants to use whatever she gains from the interaction against them, maybe in the future or maybe never, who knows? She really knows what to say to kind of draw you in, captivate you. I mean, everyone in the school is obsessed with her, even though she is just a mean girl. I truly love this movie. I think it's so funny, so well scripted. It truly is one of the most iconic movies of the 2000s. I think Scorpios could really appreciate how this movie it's kind of like a puzzle piece or a chess game where Katie and her friends are playing against Regina George and the plastics or at least they think they are and then of course the plastics make a move that they weren't expecting and it's just a really really fun movie that I feel like Scorpius will really enjoy next is Sagittarius Sagittarius always want to live a great adventure they can never really enjoy just the simple things in life they just want to have greater experiences because of that they're always looking for someone to have a good time with they don't don't necessarily want to think about consequences they just want to enjoy and have a good time and experience the world with other people they don't really want to take life too seriously they just want to enjoy the ride I think the perfect movie for Sagittarius is the holiday I love this movie so much it's about two women who exchange houses one of them lives somewhere snowy I forgot where and the other one lives in California so they swap houses and lives they decide to do this impulsively but both of them are in a very temporary situation where they just wanted a change of scenery they just wanted to have a good time for a little bit and now they have to make a decision now they have to you know it becomes a really good rom-com basically what i love about this movie is that you're basically getting two movies in one because one of them is you know about this couple in the snowy house <laughs> and the other one is about this other couple in California. I feel like Sagittarius would really like this movie because it's just so fun. You have different sceneries, different settings, different love lives, different adventures, and I think that could really excite Sagittarius. Also, I feel like this movie could spark an idea in Sagittarius's mind if 
you could really do this and exchange your life with someone else, I feel like they would definitely do it in a heartbeat. Next is Capricorn. Capricorns are, of course, achievement obsessed. I don't want to say work obsessed, but rather achievement obsessed because they really want to succeed in an area of their lives that they put so much effort, so much time into. They just want to succeed. This makes them have a terrible fear of failure, of course. It can be very stressful, the life of a Capricorn. I do not envy it. The movie that I chose for Capricorn is Bring It On. Bring It On, of course, is about a cheerleader who is the captain of her team. She's a great captain. She really loves cheerleading. It's all that she wants to do. She just wants to succeed and she wants her team to win. They go into these competitions where they have to face these other amazing teams. It's a great competition movie. It's got great cheerleading routines, iconic 2000s aesthetics and vibes and fashion. If you have seen the sequels, they've made several. They're really not as great as this first one. I feel like Capricorns can probably feel identified with, you know, Taurus's need to succeed, but I feel like they could also learn a little bit from her because even though, yeah, they, they really want to do everything to succeed, both teams kind of learn how to respect each other, not be blinded by the shiny trophy. Moving on to Aquarius. If I could define Aquarius with like a fictional character. I feel like it would be Jughead from Riverdale. <laughs> he seems like an Aquarius to me. Aquariuses really feel like they are different, not like everybody else. They really find being normal kind of boring. They want to make themselves seem very interesting. They really find worth in being like the odd one out. They're really drawn to people that are the same way. They don't necessarily want someone who is normal and really into all of the mainstream things. They want someone who has kind of like niche interests. The 2000s movie that I chose for Aquarius is Donnie Darko. Donnie Darko, I feel like it's a very um, defining movie of the 2000s. This teenager survives a bizarre accident and after that he starts kind of envisioning this strange rabbit person um, that appears out of nowhere and he kind of convinces the teenager to do crime. <laughs> It's definitely super weird. A very weird movie. I feel like someone like Aquarius would be really into. It is kind of dark, kind of nightmarish. There's definitely something that draws you in to this movie. It kind of feels like a dream or a nightmare. It's also kind of sci-fi, very existential. So I think this is right on Aquarius's lane. And the last sign is Pisces. Pisces could be considered daydreamers just because they're always absorbed in their thoughts. They're very creative. They really like to feel grand things and escape into huge worlds, be it, you know, by watching movies or reading books or, you know, in their imagination. That's why they really like the ocean, for example, because it's just so vast and so mysterious and there's just something magical about it that they really enjoy. I think the perfect movie from the 2000s that Pisces could identify with is Lord of the Rings. The Lord of the Rings is one of the greatest movies of the 2000s or the greatest franchises of the 2000s and it's one of the most epic stories of all time. This movie is definitely magical. It really, when you watch it, it's just so immersive that you almost forget that you're watching a movie, that you almost forget that there's no elves, there's no hobbits. I think they would be really drawn to this epic adventure and of course the amazing beautiful scenery of New Zealand or I mean Middle Earth. There's so many stories about fantasy worlds but I think The Lord of the Rings is like the epitome of a fantasy world. It's really one of the most popular movies of this decade. If you're a Pisces and you still haven't you know immersed yourself in this world of The Lord of the Rings, I really suggest you do. The movies are long but they're definitely worth it. They're just masterpieces. And that's it. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I love the 2000s. I feel like it was a really great era for movies. Let me if you have other suggestions and also let me know if you want me to do this with 90s movies 80s movies etc now i really want to talk about one of my absolute favorite streaming services which is movie movie is a curated streaming service that is dedicated to elevating great cinema from all around the globe not only do they have movies from iconic directors they also have a lot of new films from independent directors there's just always something new to discover with movie each and every film is hand selected it's like having your own personal film 
festival in your laptop or in your TV. It is absolutely amazing, especially if you love cinema. I have been able to watch a lot of great movies that aren't really available anywhere else other than on movie. For example, I recently watched a movie that has become one of my absolute favorite coming of age stories that I've ever seen and it's called House of Hummingbird. It was just such a beautiful film. I know I've talked about it before on other videos, but it really resonated with me and I have movie to thank for that. Their selection is truly unmatched. You can try movie free for 30 days at movie.com slash cinemonica. That's M-U-B-I dot com slash cinemonica for a whole month of great cinema for free. If you are a film lover, you definitely need to try out movie. All right, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.